Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Hey everybody, how you doing again? Hey, this is Tim with Intrepid Exotics. And we've got a couple of our friends in already, Benny and Christina. Uh, should be a little bit better this time because I've got some help with moderators. So I can don't have to do all of that quite by myself now. So hope you guys have had a great week. And we're still working on getting a couple new videos out. i got a really cool tribute video that I'm going to be working on here over the course of the next uh, few days. Uh, hopefully we should be able to get that out before, uh, before next week. But... Uh, Hey, hey, Mr. Hill, how you doing? But um, today, uh, we've got a really cool guest, a uh, gentleman by the name of Jeremy Turgeon, and he is, you guys may know him, he was um, previously with Nerd up north and recently moved down here to North Carolina. Uh, he's been really instrumental, uh, he's one of the guys that are founding the Carolina Herpological Society, and we got really lucky today because he ended up falling in on a gig, he's also a musician. And um, so we're catching him right in between rehearsals and going on. Now, we may have a little bit of connectivity issues, so just kind of bear with us there. But for those of you that don't know, I'm going to go ahead and run a quick intro here and uh, show you guys some of the stuff that Jeremy's done, and then we'll bring him in uh, and chat for a little while. This is a jungle zebra jag, and it is absolutely crazy. Check out that pattern. There's nothing else like this. Pure Darwin albino, and man, check that out. All of a sudden, it was this, right? And the first thing you see is me. I'd be scared too. Who is not super thrilled about being handled? He's very scared. You can hear that, that sound. He's making that that's uh, basically what they would use to uh, call in the troops. The tattletale? Yeah, kind of pretty much. Mm. Um, you know, that's what happens when you call an alligator a gecko. <laughs> they get very mad. See, that is not, he's not happy. We're going to be delving into the experiences of reptile lovers from around the block and around the world. This is the Reptile Talk Podcast. Phil is here. He learned how to technology. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Phil in here. <laughs> What's Rude. Up? Now I know Rude. I always come back. <laughs> we just got joined by head honcho over at Nerd, Kevin McCurley, who's of course been a massive uh, help uh, along over the years on various bits of, of legislation. And um, I want to take a second if he's got anything he wants to, uh, to yeah, add on. on this. We, we always know I have a lot to add. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to drag this on any further. So without further ado, Welcome, everybody. Brian Cusco. The man, the, man. the legend. That's a lot to live up to all of a sudden. I... What's up, everybody? This is Jeremy Turgeon from Brassman Reptiles. And I'm Rob, and I'm creeping it real. I'm super excited because tonight we have... A very special guest. A very special guest. The Mis amazing... Mr. Garrett Hartle the from The amazing Reach Super Reptiles. Dwarf King. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get Garrett on, in here right real on. quick. I'm super pumped for this episode. Oh, oh there what he up, is. dude? What's How's up, it going? Garrett Hartle? Could you guys see me about two seconds before this? No. no. Were you chugging a, a drink? I, or I drank this and then I was like hacking my lungs out. And you're like, let's get them on. And I was like, oh, they're coming. <laughs> oh, dude, I love this snake, man. Absolutely love this snake. I worked with Amazon Tree Boas about 10 or 12 years ago when they were all pretty much imports. Nobody was really breathing. Hey, so there's Jeremy as some of the stuff that he was doing. Uh, really active down here in the North Carolina community right now. So he's all set. We're going to bring him on. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing, brother? How are you doing? <laughs> oh, not too bad, not too bad. Hey, man, thanks for coming out. And uh, I know you're busy out there. What, um, what do you got going on out there where you're at? I'm in Asheville. I'm playing, uh, playing a wedding gig. The uh, the trumpet player is supposed to be here uh, on COVID. Yeah. Uh, and called in to come and do it instead. So, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> we can do that. We'll make it work. 
Man, it'll be nice one of these days when we actually get done with that. We don't have to worry about people falling out from it. I know, man. <laughs> well, I guess if you you said Asheville, right? You said Asheville, right? Yeah. 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 There ain't too many place, too many better places to be out here in North yeah. Carolina on the weekend. It's a pretty cool spot. Yeah, it's it's really gorgeous. Out there. We're here, the Bilt, Biltmore. I think that's where we're at. Oh so yeah. It's, it's super nice up here. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. I've only been out there a couple times, but um, so hey, um, I know you probably kind of pressed for time. I'm guessing you need to get back in there pretty soon. About how long do you got? Yeah, I mean, I got about an hour. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to figure that out ahead of time so we can kind of touch everything that we wanted yeah. to cover because we definitely want to talk about the Herb Society, um, you know, and of course, you know, I'm going to be talking about the. Uh, uh, Brassman Reptiles YouTube channel, which was really, really cool that you and uh, you, I love watching you and Rob on there. But um, for the guys that don't, for the guys that don't know you out there, man, um, kind of give us a quick rundown on you know how you got started with reptiles and so forth, and how you wound up out there at Nerd, you know, working in that facility. Heck yeah! So. I mean, I feel like it's a pretty, pretty typical storyline. Uh, you know, I was a kid fascinated with dinosaurs and way too much of the crocodile hunt, you know. <laughs> uh, I was about maybe five, six years old, went to the pet shop, one of the local pet shops my mom, and uh, they had fire belly toads, which you don't really ever see those anymore. Right. Uh, he got was like, I need that toad. He <laughs> was temper tantrum. In the middle of the pet shop. <laughs> hey, did let me get the toad. And, uh, and that was like, that was it. I was like, huh, you know. When uh, we got a computer in the house, I was on there researching, doing as much as I possibly could, getting books in the law, all that stuff. Um, and it was right around the age of 10 uh, that I got my first snake, which was a, a corn snake. And then there was a ball python. Yeah, as soon as my mom finally said yes to getting snakes, she realized real quick she made a mistake. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, when I finally got out of my parents, I probably had like 150 snakes in the house. Um, but, uh, oh, man. Uh, you know, I mean, over the years, I've had, yeah, over the years, I've worn sort of six or seven dozens of reptiles and amphibians and, and bred near that same amount. But uh, in that time, I got really lucky meeting certain people. And one of those people was Kevin over at Nerd. I met him when I was in my early teens, um, thanks to a friend of mine at the Western Mass Herb Society um, who knew Kevin pretty well. And he was like, you, you know, you, you got to go meet, you know, Kevin McCurley. And I was like, I don't know who that is, but okay, you know. Right. <laughs> and, uh, Went up there, got set up with a private tour, and Kevin didn't do the tour with one of his staff members. I met him really briefly, came in, shook my hand, and then, like, left. And, like, that was it. And uh, I was like, All right, okay, who's so that? Oh, that's, that's Kevin, that's the owner. I was like, oh, that was a cool five seconds of my life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, I mean, anybody you know, Kevin, he's pretty antisocial, and, you know, he'll, he'll be nice, you know, but in the back of his brain just wants to run away and, and right. leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can uh, certainly relate to that. <laughs> probably can. Um, but, but, yeah, when I was older, I got my I used to go to Nerd once or twice a month. And, uh, you know, Kevin was really the guy that uh, taught me a lot about various reptile species, but also about genetics and understanding genetics, um, primarily in ball pythons, but I learned the rest along the way. Um, you know, so a lot of that knowledge came from him. Uh, before I met Kevin, uh, there was a guy named Adam Harris in Connecticut uh, who owns a pet shop, Harris in Wonderland. And he was the first guy that ever took me seriously when I was, you know, talking about my dreams of working with reptiles. You know, right. he was the guy that took the kid seriously. So uh, and he was a big guy that did that who kind of got me hooked on colubrids. Right. Uh, in between that, in 2000, 
I met up with uh, with Brian Barczyk at a White Plains New York Expo, and uh, he quickly became another for me coming up. So I got really lucky. Uh, right. I'm a fairly introverted person, over, um, but I got really lucky to meet you know these people that I considered the guys. Right. You know, um, other, you know, other help along. You know, I knew if I had a question about genetics or I had a question about like obscure species, I could call Kevin. You know, I knew if I had like a breeding question, I could obviously call Kevin. But uh, you know, at the time I was breeding a lot of colubrids in my teens, uh, and Barczyk had a, a vast colubrid collection, so I could call him for for uh, questions about that stuff. And, uh, and Adam was also had a very collective collection, excuse me. Um, so I got really lucky and surrounded myself with people that had been doing it for a long time uh, that could answer pretty much any question I threw at them, you know. Right. Um, and man, anybody who knew me in my teens knows that I was an arrogant little shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can relate but, to that as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, as, as I got older, uh, it was it was really just like, man, I just love I just love these animals, man. I, I like working with them. I, I obviously enjoy breeding them. Uh, so to get to the nerd thing, working at nerd, um, I literally was just visiting nerd one day. I just went up to go see Kevin, and uh, he was like, "Hey, man, you you looking for work?" You know, and I, I was uh, I was teaching music full time at that at that point in time, and I was still the out from teaching. It had been probably about like six or seven years, and I was, yeah, I could use a different job. So uh, I thought he just needed to make a set of hands cleaning snake poop. I didn't know he was looking for a manager. Wow. You know. Uh, so I was like, no, I just need to pick up uh, this school year. I need to get to the end of this school year. I don't want to leave the kids hanging halfway through. Right. Uh, and then you know I'll, I'll move right on up, man. You know, and that's and. Uh, it was, it was good. I don't say it was good that I owned Kevin at that, you know, maybe 10, 11 years beforehand, you know, because uh, I, I knew kind of how crazy his book was, you know, right. and how to interpret the things that he would say and the way that he would say them. So uh, right. some people have reached out to me and they're like, dude, Kevin's crazy, man. Like, you're not going to be able to survive. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, no, man, give it, give it time. Uh, you know, so I, it was it was really easy for me to kind of fit in. And again, coming up, looking and learning in that collection, you know, the thing I needed to learn was, as a manager was more the, the inner workings of the um, you know, and more one-on-one -on -one working with Kevin, right. more so than anything else. You know, like the animal care, I had come up around all of those things, the water monitors, the caiman alligators, you know, all that stuff, I was already pretty well versed in that, Right. you know, and uh, it was funny because the, a couple of the staff members used to try to test me, they would, uh, they would bring me into their rooms and uh, have me work with maybe their most cantankerous animal, you right. know, just to see if I was really about it, you right. know, you know, even, you know, 18 foot we kicked out of cages, you know, for cleaning and stuff, I'm like, all right, let's go, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, you, you know, you and I'm like, I told it wasn't like, oh, you know, I would like the kicks, you know. Right. Whatever. But uh, it was it was an amazing experience. Man. It was great. I really enjoyed working with Kevin uh, and all of his insanity, you know. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody that's really good at what they do is a little bit eccentric. You know, that, that tends to be the, you know, I mean. <laughs> Look at Elton John, you know, one of the best musicians in the world, and he's about as eccentric as they come. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just about every profession I've seen, it's the same way. So there's something to be said for it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, you, I mean, you got really lucky, though, because, I mean, it's when I first got into it, and I'm kind of an infant, you know, as far as reptiles go, compared to a lot of the folks, you know, you guys. And, you know, when I was 10 years old, I was doing entirely different stuff. And it wasn't until the last probably five or six years I really got into reptiles. 
And it is really difficult to find mm-hmm. anybody to mentor you with things like monitor lizards and, and big snakes and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, man, yeah, really fortunate. Yeah. One of the, one of the reasons why we put the channel together here is just because of that reason, you know, people have such a hard time finding, you know, mentorship and there's so many of those animals out there. So. Yeah, no, man, it's, it really is <clears throat> thinking about those, those things coming up. You know, I mean, it gave me, it gave me a really unique. Yeah. You know, um, that I know, and, and I, I wish, it's like, like when people hit me up, I get messages constantly from people. I bet. You know, asking me various questions because I work at Nerd and, and all. I just need somebody to give me advice, you know, and, and I'm like, man, it's crazy that there aren't more people, you know, it's come in, in 20 years, you know. Uh, we got, you know, I got my start reading books and, and Googling things. You know, it mm-hmm. wasn't until I was, you know, in my, my early teens, I finally got connected with these people. And then after that point, it was just kind of like a straight shot. But, right. um, but yeah, it's crazy with the reach of social media. It's, it's hard. It seems almost harder to find information and, and a solid source to get information from, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's so much out there, you know. The information is all over the place, but determining what's right, yeah, you know, I think that's our biggest problem as a society right now. Everybody can have whatever information yeah. they want, whether it's right or wrong, you know. So, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I can, I can decide that I want to think the Earth is flat, and I can get online and find enough evidence on there to come up with a good argument for it, you know. I could probably prove Santa Claus in the evening. <laughs> it's just, it's just bad with reptiles because there's, there's not too many different ways to do it. I mean, there's a right way to do it and and a wrong way. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so it can. Yeah, I, I think that's that, that gets misconstrued because there. I mean, yeah, there's there's a right way and a wrong way. There's also. We, we don't necessarily talk about this enough, and this is, I'll go on a minor seven like tangent. Uh, yeah. You know, we're dealing with, with in the most, for most people, red reptiles. You know, <laughs> there's a few people obviously that deal with imports and stuff like that, but we're talking about living creatures, right? So they harbor bacteria, they have, you know, internal flora and, 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 and fauna or whatever. You know, they're not. You know, clean being. You know, but when we start hearing phrases, this is wild caught, and you get you get you get groups of people that think that means like clean versus unclean animals, yeah. and and how to do that, and it, and it's, it's not really right. And you get a little bit of play with them with certain, things. they can tolerate certain things. You know, but like you read the care sheet for an animal, but you don't necessarily look at where that animal comes from. So that animal can handle a lot more than you understanding. And if you think, oh, well, you know, I don't want to get my animal sick because, you know, the temperature is wrong or whatever, you know, or I don't, I don't want to dip and then, and then mess this animal up. And, and you know, in, in many cases, not all cases, but some animals do really need something very specific. Right. Um, you know, but, like, I think an instance, uh, uh, North American colubrids, you know, if you look at the, the length of temperature across the United States, right, we, we tell people on average most colubrids, you know, they want to be in the mid to upper 80s, and that's, that's pretty much it. If you look at the vast temperature range of the U.S., right, I mean, we're talking, somebody's going to deal with 100 plus degrees, obviously they're not sitting in 100 degrees, you know, but right. they, they are exposed to those temperatures for a period of time. And just because you may have, you know, maybe you, you got a new book or something for your for your tank, and you're freaked out because the temperature spiked. Oh my God! It was at 100 degrees for five minutes. <laughs> right. No, it's fine. Yeah. 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 So just like understanding that dealing with living creatures that come from, you know, different points of the world that change. You know, we put everything in, in this. And we're like, okay, this is what it is, and it needs right. to be this. Otherwise, and like, 
that's not really accurate. You know, for right. some species. Again, some species are like, if it's more than 80 degrees, I'm going to drop those right now. <laughs> you know? but, You're going to be hard pressed to find any place in the world that's got less than a 10 degree temperature gradient all year round. I mean, exactly. there's, there's a lot of merit to that. Yeah, you know, so it's just, it's just interesting to think about that I think we get so caught up in the care feet and not, not the understanding of the environment where that air comes from that we, we lose a little bit. And then when you hear somebody saying, like, oh, I keep my animal like this, then you get all that finger pointing mm. and uh, you're doing it. It's like, yeah. oh, man, the parameters are, you know, uh, but we're not dealing with mugs at walmart right. you know we're dealing with live creatures mm -hmm. yep yeah and there's i mean social media we, we we could talk about that on every friggin' program you know it's like trying to keep things positive and trying to keep people from ripping each other to pieces and things like that and uh i i think it's starting yeah. to get a little bit better yeah a little bit i, I think that more and more um, you know, especially with creators and so forth, you know, really kind of pushing that, that positivity and not ripping each other apart, you know, so I, I think do it. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, I mean, when we start looking at content creators and, uh, you know, what gets posted online, you know, I mean, you know really well. I think most people that you know, here that know me know that I work really closely with USR, and uh, you know, and, and how what we post really does play a direct role in, in uh, what happens to us, you know, and how we showcase ourselves. And we have content creators envelope, you know, uh, and sometimes those people don't necessarily get called out for nonsense uh, because we're in this everything's hunky-dory, positive. Sometimes you have to be like, hey, man, no, you're great. Like, you're this thing. Maybe not. Right. Maybe not. Maybe don't do that. You know, the sad thing is when that happens, you know, you get the mobs of, you told my friend they can't do this. So it creates all the drama and nonsense. And it's like, oh, man, right. you can be your friend and not agree with 100% of the you do right you know it doesn't mean i'm not your friend mm -hmm. you know it just means like hey, i give you a little bit of shit for doing that stupid thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i mean that's that's something that's something we should all do i mean as a matter of fact you even um caught me on a mistake i made on facebook one time we was talking about the tegu ban before i knew that it was only the argentine black and white tegus he jumped out he's like hey check this out you know that's the way yeah. it's supposed to be, you know. We gotta kind of cover each other's back because we're all gonna make mistakes at some point, you know. Exactly, exactly, dude. I'm a good buddy Mike, great carpet python breeder up in Jersey. Uh, he had reached out to me because I had posted uh, one of my carpets on uh, Morph Market, and stupidly, uh, the thing was like this zebra jungle to a an awful jungle tag. And I had thrown them under the pure jungle category when they're actually not pure jungles because the jag comes from the coastal carpets. Right. So he was like, hey, man, there was not pure. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, I wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking, you know, because they're, <laughs> right? especially when they're like such high Oh, but like, Yeah, our audio is going to be kind of in and out on this because Jeremy's out in Asheville right now. And uh, so we're going to have a little bit of connectivity issues waiting on him to get back in. Let me give him just a second here. Audio on my end. Yeah, we're getting there. There, it caught up a little bit. All right, I can hear you now. There we go. Yeah, we just had a little bit of dead space there. It's all, all right. good. <laughs> yeah. Up there yeah. in the mountains, it's not too, not not too uh, conducive to really good cell phone connectivity, which is probably yeah. a, a lot of the draw. <laughs> so what got you guys? Yeah. And we we had a rainstorm. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a storm coming in too. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's coming our yeah. way. 
So we're about ready to get that too. Yeah. yeah. So what was it that um, made you decide to come down to North Carolina, man? Honestly, you know, there's a couple of things. The music scene was uh, was the biggest push. I got some opportunities out in the Charlotte area of music that, uh, you know, I, I'm, I would have been really sad if I didn't take them and then have them pan out, you know. Right. So I, I was like, you know what, I think it's just time to take that, that for myself, right. you know. Um, and the other, the other wonderful draw is the fact that, uh, you know, reptile regs down here are, are not bad, right. you know. Um, they're annoying, but they're not bad. Um, but that was, that was quite cool as well. Yeah, and I think, I think the more, I mean, North Carolina too, as far as U.S. ARC and NC ARC and so forth, I mean, still kind of almost in fledgling state with that. Um, you know, I know NC ARC is still, you know, kind of, struggling to get a really good push going and get everything get everything online and we can't we can't count on phil to cover our ass on everything so um you know it really does help you know having folks with a bigger presence you know like yeah. yourself out here to, to kind of help uh help push things along too um you know just like the, the herb society you know between north and south carolina which is an awesome thing that you yeah. guys started up Yeah, man, that was that was literally just like a. It was one of those. I I enjoyed when I was in New England. We have the New England Society up there, and I was on the board there for for a couple of years, and and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what they brought to the table for reptile keepers in the area. You right. know, so when I came down here, that was one of the first things I was. Herb society, and uh, you know, South Carolina has societies, but they're focused on native herpetoculture. Mm. Native species, protecting native species, not necessarily super friendly to the private sector. Um, right. And that was, you know, that was, it just irritated me a little bit, you know, because I feel like most private keepers genuinely also care about the native reptile. Right. You know, <laughs> so, you know, it was like, and we, we were able to bridge this gap a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to, uh, you know, I reached out to and, and Nick Bettini down in South Carolina and, and Josh Ortiz and uh, we're like, hey, man, you know, what, what do you think about this? Like, let's, let's put something together. And, you know, then we got Aubrey Pruitt involved and Alex Michael Lee. And, um, we, you know, we were like, let's, let's just be, let's create this entity, you know, and, and utilize it as a resource. You know, um, it's like we discussed at that at that first meeting, you know, like the whole the whole of a herb society is to be a centralized resource for people. Right. You know, for, for any anything. You know, leg uh, you know, general information on, on species and also network. You know, uh, when we're talking about you know, like we're talking about getting guests to come in and, and do talks and stuff like that. You know, between the reach of myself and, and Ron and and Aubrey and, and Nick and Josh, um, and I'm sure Alex too, I, I'm still getting to know. But, you know, I mean, we can get damn near anybody, you know, to come out if we pay for a flight, right. you know. Yeah. And for me, that, you know, that's where obviously where membership fees and everything come into play later on, but uh, right. that is so vital. So one of my favorite parts of the New England Herb Society was getting people coming in to do talks, even if it was about native species. It's like, yeah, teach me about what's in the backyard. I want to learn about that stuff. You right. Know? Um, it's been, you know, I mean, like, all the, the few breeders of Rikik, like, with some of the highest-end stuff out there right now, with the Ocelot Project, and he just got the, that clutch uh, from an Ocelot to an albino pied. You know, so you can have triple head ocelot albino pied retic. You know, I mean, like, same. You know, uh, nose is retic. Uh, you know, with the bloods and the short tails, the scrubs, myself with, with carpets and, and various colubrid species. You know, I mean, Nick with bloods as well. There's, there's so much of a resource that right. exists here. Um, to be able to make a phone call and say, hey, kind of, you know, I want you to come down for, for two days and do this talk meeting and then we'll go, you know, we'll go field hunting or something, you know, right. 
and be like, here's your, here's your plane ticket. You know, like, just get them out of here, man. Just get them out of here and meet the people, talk to the people, you know. Uh, that, that's what the whole idea was, was to just create this resource and be utilized. And, and you know, we've, we've already gotten the, the support of Phil at, at US Arc and, and, and that stuff as well, you know. Right. So he's like, anything you guys need, for, you know, for anything that might be happening in the state or whatever, you know, just, you know, and I'll help you however I can. You know, I'd love to fly Phil out from the Midwest and have him talk at a meeting. Right. You know, like that, that kind of stuff matters. You know, and, and makes an impact, and that at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It, 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 I don't right. care about, you know, look better. But I've I've heard rumors from a certain point, and I'm like, no, that's not real. Like right. I've I've done this long enough. I yeah, you know, I care about making sure other people have an opportunity, even if it's a sliver of the same opportunity that I had when things were less chaotic. In, in the world in general right. um that's that's what matters to me you know everybody gets the opportunity you know and what they do after the opportunity is given is on them you know mm-hmm. but i i enjoy being a resource and, and and the person that's willing to make that opportunity available yeah yeah and that's something that's really really possible with the herb society with the i mean even that group that we had out there um at the lake the other day, or, you know, last month. I think it was last month, wasn't it? But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, yeah. that that was such a diverse group out there, you know? And it seemed like everybody yeah. had their... And it'd be really cool to do something, you know, just like a public event or something where a few of us bring our animals out there and stuff. You know, have a couple big constrictors, have a couple, you know, monitor yeah. lizards and stuff like that, and set up at a park or something where, you know get a permit for it, the general public can come by and see. And because and, I really think that that's going to go a long way yeah. towards us being able to avoid these bad laws because, you know, the general public as a whole is pretty afraid of these animals. And, you know, if we just do stuff like that, that's really chill and low pressure, and, yeah. you know, just, just expose people to them more, you know, sooner or later, you know, that's going to make all, all our lives a little safer as keepers, you know? Yeah, and that's that's exactly it, man. You know, I, I tell people, I've said this on multiple live streams, you know, like, we are still very much a fringe mm-hmm. hobby. You know, like, we're, we're taboo to the general public, you know, and granted, the industry has grown tremendously in the last two decades, you know, but if, what usually what I tell people is if you're in the industry, and all you do is surround yourself with reptile people. So all you see on your social media is reptile people and blah, blah, blah. You know, and you think the world is great and everybody loves reptiles. You have blinders on. Yeah. yeah. If you look at any local news station, an article about reptiles or something negative happening with reptiles, and you look at the comments, you see all people that are like, oh, it's great. You know, like that's the general view of what we do from the outside right. looking in. You know, and uh, and that's that's frustrating. But, uh, it just means we have more work to do in educating the public about right. about these animals. Yeah, and I've got um, the uh, Facebook page. There's a let's see, this should be the Facebook page right there. Um, it's actually a picture of the, uh, the meeting from last month and, uh, and Jeremy and Rob and Aubrey and a whole bunch of people out there. Um, just jump on there, uh, jump on to Carolina Herpetological Society page on Facebook. And, um, you know, Jeremy keeps everybody abreast of when we have, uh, meetings and things like that. So, you know, it's open to, uh, it's open to everybody, you know, even if you're not a reptile keeper and you just want to come in and learn. There's a, a vast, I mean, there's some people out there that are really, really knowledgeable with reptiles. So you don't have to be yeah. a reptile expert by any measure to um, to go in and feel right at home with these guys, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. No. Let's see. I think there was, man, what, what else was I thinking of? I had something here, too. 
So, um, and I seen on your Facebook the other day, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Florida. What's yeah. going on in Florida? When is that, too? And that's this is a first that's going on down there. So, so what's the scoop? There's, there's a lot happening in Florida. <laughs> Uh, legislative Florida is a big um, oh no the, the creators conference this most recent ruling that, that oh, good yeah stuff. Good stuff. yeah, yeah I seen <laughs> yeah I seen on your Facebook page you put something out about the creators conference down here oh we know Florida is jacked up with the laws <laughs> We could just resign ourselves to fight in that battle until we die. <laughs> yeah, she's no. Uh, so Con is is the brainchild of of uh, Bartek, and uh, you know him along with his entire team, uh, Brian Potter and Bob Ashley from NARBC, um, are putting this this event together. And basically, it's an opportunity to meet some of your favorite content creators. Uh, on every platform, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, uh, even TV. Uh, you know, there's going to be some, some TV hosts there. Uh, a couple of the guys from from Tank be there. There's a few other people. It's a job. There's no, no live animals, nothing like that. It's just a chance to meet you know, essentially your favorite creators. Uh, right. All in one place, uh, you know. Evan's flying down, you know, which is which blows my mind. <laughs> have to leave the building, so right. <laughs> here's a chance to speak, you know. Uh, but you know, yeah, there's all these people coming into one place. It's gonna be great. There's gonna be operations. There'll be meet and greets. Um, there'll be uh, expert panels and stuff on, on different topics. So it's just gonna be a great weekend, and it's in Orlando. Who doesn't love being in Orlando? Right. Uh, it's a great. It's a great area. When um, is that again? You know, have some fun. It's just gonna be cool to hang. It's uh, eight, or sorry, twenty sixth to twenty eighth. Twenty sixth to twenty eighth of August. Okay. Of August. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So it's a week. Uh, the... Yeah, we're still breaking up a little bit, so I'm deciphering what I can in between oh, it. Yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's 26 to the 28th, uh, and that's the weekend after the Daytona. Oh, okay. Cool. cool. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to see if I can't maybe make it down to that. I think that'd be a pretty good time. And, of course... Yeah, it's going to be great. It's at AnimalConUSA.com. You can get your tickets. Uh, Single-day passes uh, are 60 bucks, 69 bucks. Uh, there's, there's different packages, tier levels, but access to different you know panels and discussions and stuff like that so right um because i saw you were like bucks a day. and it's like well if you want to go for one day you know, yeah but if you want to go for the weekend or you want to go for the whole you know there's different there's different prices and different packages for you to get right yeah that'd be really cool and of course there's going to be a million videos about it afterwards i'm sure because every content creator down yeah, here is going to have their phone out <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, man. check that out. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody here too. Let me see. Where was this at? Somebody had mentioned. They put that out there. That's Christina. Said you was an awesome musician. Oh yeah. And I, I, I got the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was like I said, man. I sent you a message the other day. Like you know, that was the first time I'd seen it. What you posted on Facebook. So for those yeah. of you that haven't seen, I've actually got that right here. I'll put that out so everybody can kind of see what you're going to be doing here a little later. As the safe for you, yeah. use your mind, you don't have to be blind. If you don't know what to do, you got too much to lose, can't give up now. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> 
Thank you. Man. I appreciate yeah. that shout out. So, absolutely, yeah. man. That was, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's... A little clip of some music that, uh, that we've been working on. Third album, third and fourth album simultaneously, actually. Um, trying to get that stuff done. So that was just a little clip from, uh, from one of the shows uh, that, uh, that my band did. And uh, yeah, those, all those guys in that video, uh, Jerome Pitts on the keys, my music director, one of my closest friends, uh, Ashton Rolls on the and that, that man is a beast. Tom Davis on the bass, Gabe Childs on guitar, and Nick Biagini on the sax. They're all, all killing musicians, man. Those guys are all like family to me. I, I just love making music with them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty shocked, man. Like I was, I was like, damn, old Jeremy can belt one out, can he? <laughs> yeah well hey look at this benny benny said he's already got his ah, i forgot to crop that right but anyway benny said he's going to animal con he's gonna be there for three days he's already got his tickets it's awesome yeah <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna have to do this again too when you get back to the office and get a little bit more stable connection. Yeah. <laughs> Connectivity, yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll get we'll get. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually get on the horn here. I'm gonna try and um, touch base with Garrett, see if he wants to jump on at some point. I'm gonna be lining people up as we go because we're trying to do this every Saturday. So I just gotta touch base with everybody and see what we can see who we can get on board for this and i definitely like to get some more of the uh carolina herp society people out here yeah absolutely absolutely i'm sure we can make that higher yeah yeah it'd be kind of cool to maybe do a larger panel or something like that with maybe a lot of the board members or something and really really explain to folks you know what the what the goal is and and you know just get setting events up and things like that and Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. So that'd be cool. It'd be all something. Well, maybe you can um, get everything set up right, actually start a YouTube channel for it like uh, US Arc did for theirs. Just get a channel strictly devoted to yeah, the right? society I mean, and everybody contribute to it. And... Yeah. No, I think, I, think, I think that's a really good idea. And I think the, the US Arc YouTube thing was a, also a great idea. I mean, Garrett Hartle is, is wonderful think that he's taken on that task and, yeah um, if people didn't see the the most recent video uh just an update on the compete that and what's going on with that yeah. um so the, the committee the committee that is essentially the competes act and and the uh, senate equivalent um they had their first meeting and uh they were already calling out the lacy act amendments for being a problem mm -hmm. uh you know, and uh there were a couple people that were also talking about you know all the extra stuff that was thrown in the competes act that is are unnecessary um right. so it's great that's really great you know that means that we've made enough of a of a, of a sound for mm -hmm. them to hear us and it's a thing because these meetings are still going to be happening as they're merging these things together so right. it doesn't mean we get to let up on all uh, it does mean that we we started to make a solid impact which yeah it is yeah i seen that and it was nice to see that getting some floor time um yeah she was really specific yeah. about um you know this is gonna really severely impact a lot of jobs you know the entire industries they do something like that so yeah, yeah it was really important sorry ahead. about that no you uh... <laughs> I think it's really important that people people realize, you know, the reptile industry, especially now, is a global industry. Yeah. You know, and I'm not just talking about, you know, selling snakes overseas or anything like that. You know, I'm talking about, um, you know, cage manufacturers and, and stuff. I mean, like, think about that. Like, freedom breeders. They've got, there are freedom breeder racks in Africa. There are freedom breeder in Europe. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's a... You know, it really is amazing to think about, you know. Um, 
just all the different distributors of, of various dry goods and, and stuff that, that are, you know, regional and international. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, this company is, is a $2 billion a year industry. That's, that's no that's small amount. Yeah. 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 I even had a guy, um, guy called me up for an interview from England and sat in on that. And that was one of the things he asked me about. He's like, what's up with this Lacey Act thing over there? Yeah, I mean they're they're keeping an eye on it overseas as well because they need to because it'll affect them as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean like we are the trendsetter. You know, as as frustrating as that is, but you know, I mean, you look at you know look at the IHS in, in Europe. You know, they they can no longer host shows in uh, I forgot what region it was, but because uh, animal rights people made enough noise about how terrible the shows are and, you know, for the animals and, you know, they put them in these cockpits and blah, 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 blah. Right. They're in there for, you know, 10 hours, you know, and then they go right back to their enclosure, you know. Right. So it's like, but they made enough noise that now they can't do that show. The IHS has been around for decades and now they just got booted out of the territory they've been in for over a decade. I remember, you know, and I mean, that's, that's crazy, mm-hmm. you know, so if they're dealing with that, you know, they need to be aware as well that what we're dealing with here could very well start happening, over here, you know, which right. means they need to be getting uh, and aware to be creating their own version of US Arc, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to get. Yeah. Yeah, that was something uh, you probably seen uh, when Adam Wickens and, and Garrett was talking about that. He just had him down. You know, it's the same yeah. thing with the Canadians, you know. They're watching, they're supporting U.S. Arc, you know, just like we are because, you know, they expect Canada to follow whatever trend that, you know, whatever yeah. trend we set. So, yep. so yeah, it's frustrating. it is, it is. And, and for anybody watching that is not already aware or remember, um, the U.S. ARC website looks like that. It's usarc.org. It's 40 bucks a year for a bronze membership. If you can do more, man, that would be awesome. But strength in numbers really does mean something. I mean, Phil Goss, yeah. um, he's the president, and when he goes down, you know, if he's got a couple million people behind him, they're going to listen to him a lot more intently than if he's only got 10,000, 10, 20,000, you know. And um, yeah, it's so really important that, um, you know, even if all you can do is have forty dollar a year membership, jump on it. You know, if all you can do is chip in a couple bucks because yeah. it ta- it costs like one hundred and fifty grand a year just for a part time lobbyist. And we've got to have those in order yeah. to, to to watchdog the legislation and so forth. So, I mean, it takes money. It does. It does. And I mean, look, I, I've been in many state rooms with Bill. To testify at various hearings and stuff, and there's no one there to represent us, to be in that room with those people. I mean, Phil is well read and articulate, and understand. He understands it, you know. And that is, like I said, you, you can't ask anybody better to be represented. All right. Yep. And that was the um. The YouTube channel I was talking about earlier too. Um, you can jump on there, get subscribed to that. I would really like to see the uh, US Arc uh, YouTube channel start generating some income. You know, you hear about all these YouTube channels that are dropping, you know, ten grand a month and so forth. That's a big one that we all need to make sure it gets there because, <laughs> you know, absolutely. That's a that's a cost of a lobbyist. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I think I think we're just about to our hour here, and um, I wanted to see really quick. I know we didn't have a whole lot of people on. I think it's probably just because of the audio quality and all that stuff. So it gets kind of tough to keep yeah. up with. But, um, but like I said, man, we'll definitely have to do this again. Yeah, when, like I said, when I'm, when I'm stable... absolutely (laughs) right so you got you got anything that you uh anything else that you wanted to put out that's kind of pertinent that we might not have went over yet 
Oh, man. Um, no, I, mean, I think we covered all the big stuff. I mean, like, support yeah. the USR, absolutely. If you're in the Carolinas and you want to check out the Carolinas, do so. Go check it out right on Facebook. Um, yeah, if you want to buy some snakes, I've got the kid hatching. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have the link to Brass Man uh, Reptiles right. down here in the description, too. Definitely get on get on there. Get subscribed to that channel. Um, yeah, we're all we're all pretty busy, and we, we try and do these as often as we can. Um, yeah, I know Jeremy and Rob, yeah. whenever they can. Whenever we can get Rob out of the woods. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, listen. Yeah, I was just talking to Rob. So I, this is the first week that I'm actually home for the week. Yeah. Just past, like months, I, I'll be home for like two or three days and then leave again, two or three days and then leave again. So this right. time I'm home for a week. Uh, so I'm just trying to catch up on stuff. And I talked to Rob and I was like, dude, let's do this because I'm going to be gone for two weeks. Pretty right. We need some content, man. We've been slacking. So, but we on the pipeline and um, I've got some people lined up. So it's just a matter of locking in the, uh, the days and time. So right. it'll be cool. Hoping to get. Uh, the UK on the podcast and um, cool. Yeah, you know, we'll get Phil and then talk more about stuff. It's stuff happening for sure. So definitely right. appreciate everybody's support of the podcast. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Greensboro's right in the middle, man. You just have to plan something right out here. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you are the epicenter, man. Yeah. Yeah, and Greensboro Science Center out here is a place where I was thinking about trying to get something set up. <clears throat> I was going to do it myself, but, um, I mean, of course, the more people that get into it. I mean, that may be a good place to do a Herp Society meeting or something, just take a couple animals out there. It's behind the Science Center, and there's a big lake out there, too, with a big, you know, field and stuff right out in the middle. That would be an awesome place. Heck, Yeah. Yeah, Heck yeah. Let's we'll talk about that for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, that that'd be that'd be good for everybody's channel. It'd be really good to uh to get some good exposure out here. Get a lot of people out there to science that. Sure. For sure. So. All right, man. Well, I hope you guys have an outstanding gig tonight, and I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I know, I know you're busy today. And no, I'm glad I'm glad I can make it happen. Sorry, being in the middle of the woods. I'm just sorry I'm not out there in the middle of the woods too, but <laughs> <laughs> I tried I tried going out. I got some woods out in my back forty here. I tried doing some field herping out there earlier. There's nothing out there. I found I found a dog wow. skull in a turtle shell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good day. <laughs> yeah, nothing that could bite me, so <laughs> All right, brother. Well, I'll touch base with you soon, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Cool, man. Sounds good. My pleasure. Awesome, man. I'll touch you soon. Have a good one. Be careful out there. All right, thanks. All right, guys. Hey, and we're going to end up talking with him again at some point. Like I said, he had an impromptu gig that he ended up working tonight. And, um, I guess Asheville's a pretty good place to be here in North Carolina on the weekend. So I'm going to go ahead and get something lined up here for next weekend. And I'll be putting that out hopefully by Wednesday. Uh, I'll know who we'll be having on. And, of course, you know any updates with the Herp Society that come up, um, I'm going to post them on the Intrepid Facebook page. And, um, of course, I've also got a video coming out this week, too, that I want to work up. Uh, there's been some changes. Um with the North Carolina Tegu ban, um, in respect that they've actually got the permit information out now. So, um, if you do have an Argentine black and white Tegu here in North Carolina, you can get on the website there and, um, apply for your permit, which you got to have by, um, August of this year. Um, so I'll, I'll put out an update with all that stuff here through the week as well. Um, probably start working on some stuff in the morning so in the meantime thanks you guys for hanging out i appreciate you you know sticking it out i know it was a little bit hard on the audio but uh well worth it jeremy's an awesome guy and um i really look forward to talking with them again and we'll post some videos of whatever we do out here so you guys have an outstanding rest of the weekend and i'll see you at some point this week y'all take care <laughs>